and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Anne McIntyre. How are you doing? I am in a weird space, a weird, weird space. And I'm going to be completely honest with you all because I think that's important. Um, I don't think many people are honest about this journey, but I'm having one of those moments at this time where I just think that I could quite cheerfully jack this whole job in and go and have a nice, peaceful, enjoyable, fulfilling life, not busting a gut doing mediumship anymore. And uh, I wanted to share that because I think it's important to talk about it. This is not my first rodeo into this emotional quagmire. It won't be my last, but it is so hard to be a medium. And I'm painfully, completely aware that I'm choosing it. I'm not being forced down this road. I'm choosing it. I'm choosing it again and again and again. And why, why would you? (laughs) So um, because this has been playing on my mind a little bit, sort of choosing ease, And if we're choosing ease, the path of a medium, I don't think is easy um, at all. And if I'm going to choose ease in my life, does that mean that I'm actually gonna be a medium at all? And I asked Spirit for some help with resolving this. And I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's just bloody hilarious. So I've had two clients today and the first client was textbook brilliant open, engaging, full of joy, excited for the experience. Both of my sitters today were um, first time sitters. So my first sitter today, yeah, really just everything you could possibly want from a sitter, really open to the experience, really loving it, um, really positive, just a really wonderful, wonderful time. And my second sitter of today was like wading through a quagmire of resistance. Um, Really funky energy, people in the background, noise going on, not fully focused on what I was saying or what I was doing. Um, Said the classic lines, shouldn't you be able to tell me that? And can you tell me their name? which just shows they're not really in a space where they're ready for a reading. So much so that for the first time ever, I asked them if they'd booked the reading or if someone else had booked it for them because I cannot believe that somebody went through my booking process and turned up feeling that much disinterest in it. Or not disinterest, I don't know. I actually think that they don't have any idea of how mediumship works and didn't really listen in my opener when I was saying it's not like the ghost whisperer I'm not talking to your loved ones in spirit they are communicating with me through energy and just had an idea of how it should be and wanted several different links with several different people in the time as well so we couldn't build anything because I was trying to build with one spirit and then she was asking for somebody else and then she was asking for somebody else and who else are they with and who are they with now and it just yeah it was very very challenging so it's so funny the little journey I've been on just this morning going from my first client where I was like oh this is where I'm supposed to be this is amazing thank you for this sign spirit to the second client where I've been like oh my god I never want to do that again that was absolutely agony and uh trying to make sense of it so that's the journey guys and that's how it is for all of us so if you're on this journey and you're wondering if you're doing something wrong actually you might not be it might just be how it is And that's how it feels to me. And it got me thinking about why people go for a reading. Um, And I think people come at mediumship from two distinct points. One group of people just want what they consider proof. And one group of people want the experience of communicating with their loved ones. And they are completely different approaches and they require completely different mediums. 
And I know I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. This is why you have to be clear on the kind of medium you are and the kind of medium you want to be. Now, I know I am not a proof medium. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not evidential and I'm not saying I'm not evidential, but what I'm saying is it's more important for me to feel the presence of that loved one in the spirit world and allow my sitter to experience the presence of their loved one in the spirit world than it is for me to talk about the date that they died and their name. And there are a few mediums that I've seen get names and I did a cracking demonstration on Thursday night. It was probably one of my favorite audiences ever because they were so fun and open and engaging and willing to just go on this journey and this experience with me. And uh, it was really, really brilliant, good fun. And within that, I got some very specific evidence. Things like a young man called Daniel who died in a car accident all spot on so that's banging up like optimum mediumship but I also understand that I can't do that on every link and that sometimes the experience that I'm having doesn't open me up to be able to to chuck out names and I got names on Thursday and that's great but I don't always get names and they're not guaranteed there are other mediums that will get names every time and real specifics but then for me personally, the mediumship doesn't have the same emotional connection. And so it's about working out the medium that you want to be and communicating that clearly to the spirit world. And it doesn't mean that you can't be both, but while you are learning and developing, you need to work where you wanna focus and expand different aspects of it at different times. And I have to be honest and say names. Everybody always wants a bloody name. But it is rare for me to have seen another medium work who just gives out names and it's their the person's first name and it's correct. And I know I've spoken about this before. I just don't understand names when it's their second cousin or their neighbour. If they can give you their neighbour's name, why wouldn't they give you their name? And it just seems... You know, if you're going down some tenuous link pit bit with names, then what's the point in that? Wouldn't you be better off talking about the actual spirit rather than someone that's loosely connected to them? I don't know. Tell me your thoughts. But I do think we need to look at proof or the experience and making sure when we're putting ourselves out there in this vulnerable state to offer mediumship, that we make it clear the kind of medium we are so that the people who, in my case, just want the hard proof and just want me to rattle off a list of facts, don't book with me, because I'm not the girl for them. And if I've got somebody who wants to have an experience like my first sitter today, who just wanted to see how it worked and see what happened and see if she could hear from her mum, just so much pleasure in that um, and such a wonderful experience. And they're the things you have to hold on to. And I guess this also comes back to what's the point of mediumship? And that's an interesting thing to think about. What do you think the point of mediumship is? Is it to prove the existence of the human spirit continuing? Well, yes, I think it is. But then for me, it's also to, pr to prove and give the comfort of the loved one in the spirit world connecting and the loved one stepping forward and knowing that they're still around and knowing that we're not doing this on our own and that our loved ones are still with us, guiding us, supporting us, loving us and seeing us. And that for me is the purpose of it, is to know that there is some meaning to this existence here. And that's what's changed my life. So again, different people have different ideas about what the point of mediumship is. Is it uh, just to dial in and prove that they're around? Is it so that you can feel them with you and you have a stronger idea that they're there? Is it so that you can make those 
continued choices in your life knowing that you are supported and guided and loved. What do you think? And I had this um, thought about emotional need and how sometimes that's a benefit in a reading. And I know I was talking about need on one of the recent podcasts, but then also how sometimes too much can become a real barrier for people. They're so in that space of trying to control their emotional reaction and control their response and not fall apart and not cry and not sob, that they become very, very still and very, very tense and that in itself becomes a form of resistance. So just like I was saying to you guys before that if you've got stuff going on in your energy you're not going to find mediumship as easy as you might like, the same goes for sitters. Now obviously you can't shame a sitter and I would never want to do that and you can't blame them, you have to learn to try to work in environments where the sitter is not as receptive. Of course you do. But you also have to understand that there's a limit to what you're going to be able to achieve and what you're going to be able to do with a sitter who has got a massive resistance chip on their shoulder, um, emotional barrier wall that they want you to help them break down when actually what they need to do is heal from it first and then come for a reading and that is always an interesting thing I always say um, because I get people sometimes that message me in the middle of the night and I don't have my phone in my bedroom and so I don't get any of these messages during the night but they are begging for readings at midnight and you always know when it's somebody that wants a reading now 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 and they need you now that actually that the thing that that person needs the most is to go and be with their emotions, work on their healing in whatever form that takes, whether it's therapy, whether it's counselling, whether it's medication, whether it's self-healing and honouring the self, whatever works, I'm not specifying, 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 I'm not specifying anything, but you just know that they're not going to get from a reading what they need because they're too reactive and that's why I don't really like psychic hotlines because the only people that ring psychic hotlines are people who are needing something now 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 and that is not a great space for spirit to be in. I know when I've been having big dramatic things going on in my life that what I've needed to do is sort of allow the dust to settle before I've turned to spirit for the answers. You need, you know they're there, you know they haven't left you, they know, you know they're supporting and guiding you, but you are not um, needing them to tell you how to navigate that because sometimes the only thing you can do is just wait for the dust to settle and nobody wants to hear that from a medium on a psychic hotline. Um, as a little aside, I also think they're a really bad idea because if by any chance you are really communicating with spirit world on those psychic hotlines, and I think the majority of them are not, sadly, um, if you've got to work an eight hour shift until 2 a.m. in the morning, you're never going to be doing your best work, are you? Um, so I always think there's a problem with that there, but hey ho. So this is where I think that idea that you have to wait six months for a reading that you hear banded about all the time comes from because of course we know that the spirit world have no time so we know that they're not there going counting off the days on a calendar until they can come through I think it's to do with the sitter's energy and I'm not trying to shame anybody here I'm not trying to say that your grief or your emotional need is a barrier but it is. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. That's what I want to say. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that you should apologise for it. But grief is such a personal journey. And for some people, they will be healed enough in a month to get a spirit link. And for some people, they won't be healed enough for 10 years to get that link and to be in that space. And I'm not saying you should have this nonchalant approach where you just rock up for a reading and you don't really give a fig, because as you know, need is important 
But you have to be not in an emotional thunderstorm when you go for a reading. And that's kind of the difference. Does that make sense? So when my grandmother passed, and I probably have said this, but I'm gonna say it again anyway. When my grandmother passed, the day that she passed, it was expected. She'd been in hospital for a long time. We were all just waiting and, and riding the roller coaster of, she's rallied, she's ill again. She's rallied, she's not conscious. And when um, she passed, the day that she passed, I was going to uh, another medium hosting a spirit board night. And my nan came through on that spirit board five or six hours after she'd passed. And it was amazing. And I was ready for that because I already believed in the spirit world. I already knew that time didn't exist. I already knew that she would automatically be okay. There wasn't any particular trauma for me in my relationship with my grandmother that I needed to reconcile or heal from. She was just my grandmother. She was complex, but she passed. That was okay. And um, so I was in a good place to be able to receive that. And I think for other people in the family who have traumatic experiences with her and stuff that they need to deal with, they wouldn't have been okay to have a hidey high from the spirit world in that moment. And that's something we need to understand. So a sitter's emotional need is necessary, but not at the point where they are in carnage and it's too much for them. And you know, some people with the best will in the world will book a reading and then as they're sitting there waiting to hear from their loved ones, it will hit them like a tidal wave. And of course, as mediums, it's our job to help people navigate through that. But I think for some of us, it's about saying, I don't think you're ready. I'm gonna refund you, it's not the right time for you. And maybe in reflection, that is what I should have done with my second lady today. Um, rather than keeping on the trying to please her and trying to get the stuff that I knew that she was desperately waiting for, maybe my work should have been to say, okay, I don't feel like you're in the right space and it's quite noisy where you are, let's reschedule for another time. And so that's always an interesting thing to navigate. Where's, where's the right place for us to be in that scenario? And of course, there's no hard and fast rules because there never is. God damn it, I wish there was. But there aren't. You have to do it on a case by case basis, an energetic space by energetic space basis. Because I have to say, after my first link going so well today, my first sitter being so brilliant, I was absolutely convinced. The second one I rocked up to thinking it was gonna be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The energy was already built. I was already in the zone. I'd already impressed myself with the evidence I was able to give. This was a good day. So for it to come out and be sideswiped like that was quite unexpected. And again, as I always say to you guys, I think it is about having those experiences so you know how to manage them next time. And maybe, just maybe, next time I will know that this is not gonna be a good 45 minutes and I'll stop it earlier than just carrying on self-flagellating, trying to get that, that sitter something that she wants. Now here's an interesting thing. Um, I've been, I record my readings with my sitters so that they can, um, have a copy of it later and normally they record it and I don't get a copy and that's fine um, but this sitter I was she was on the phone so I recorded it and that has given me an interesting and unique perspective because I got to watch the reading back and one of the things that I really recommend you do if you're a developing medium is, um, or even if you're a practicing medium, I mean, where do we draw the line in developing? But regardless of where you are, I would record your readings, even if you just do it as a voice note on your phone while you're working, I would record them and then I would play them back and write down every single individual bit of evidence that you get that is taken. Because that's a really fascinating way of seeing actually how much you've given. Because we all, want to give more, I think. And I was listening to the Squamish Medium 
this week, uh, she's got a podcast, Spirit of School, and she was talking uh, about good enough. And that was just perfect timing for me, that podcast, because she was exploring you know, what is good enough and the idea of good enough and the energy of the words. And that was a really interesting thing to hear. But one of the things that she touched on, which I think was so true, is that we are always wanting more. And that is the problem of mediumship, is that we always want more. It doesn't matter how much you give, you always come away from it thinking, I should have given more, I should have done more. And it's very, very hard to stay in an empowered state, especially when you're dealing with the infinity of information that is somebody's life. And especially when you're dealing with your own insecurities in your own vulnerability that is giving a reading because it's a vulnerability for everybody every single person no matter how much experience they've got it's still a vulnerability for them being a medium and putting themselves in that space and when you've got somebody that says something like very well meaning it doesn't mean they're bad people but have you got a name because they don't really understand how it works and they haven't done the research that they should do before they've gone for a reading and they don't know the kind of medium that you are and they only know what they've seen on Hollywood and their idea of how it works. And actually the impact that that has on you as a medium and where you go, oh my God, I knew I should be able to get names and I can't get names and I'm failing. And of course, the difference between surrender and, and receiving and seeking. And that's where you need to be with the spirit world is in a surrender and receiving energy, not a seeking energy. As soon as you try to control the fragility of mediumship, it's like trying to grab a bubble that's floating in the air. It will pop and then you'll have to build the bubble once more. And it's not the sitter's fault that they don't know that. It's just something that you have to learn to navigate and hold that space. And sometimes you'll be able to do it and sometimes you'll fail. And I don't think us as mediums talk about the failing enough because we want to seem more beautiful and shiny and perfect. But actually the truth is, sometimes I've blown my own mind with the evidence that I'm able to receive. Sometimes I have been like, wowed to my very core about how amazing I am and sometimes it just hasn't felt good enough and what's interesting to do as a practice is to listen back to your reading and realize how many pieces of evidence you gave that were correct it's so easy to focus on the no's and as I've said to you guys no's aren't always absolute no's the number of times people have messaged me afterwards and gone I've said no to that but I've realized what it is and it's actually a yes I can't believe I forgot about this it's huge huge number of times that happens but it's understanding that you need to start viewing your mediumship as okay it's okay to be okay and that's good enough and there are so many factors brought into mediumship that it it's very, very hard to hold yourself in a, in the great state all the time. Uh, I remember talking to one of my teachers, Lynn Probert, and saying to her, God, when you said this and you did this, oh, it was so amazing. I've never seen mediumship like it. And her saying, well, I wish they were all like that, but of course they're not, which is so true. And I really, at the time I went, oh, okay. But now I really get what she meant. I really understand that that you just there are so many factors you can't control that would change the entire experience of a reading for you and for the sitter and for the spirit but that just have to be factored in and there's nothing you can do so do try recording that even though it's massively cringe try recording it because then when you list how many things you actually get right you'll realize that you're actually better than you think you are. And that's a really good way of expanding and analysing your work. So do do that, count it down, see how many bits you get. And um, the Squamish medium was saying, you know, think of a number, and not a ridiculous number, but a number that you think is enough 
in your mediumship and I thought that was such a good idea. So what do you think, pieces of evidence wise, is a good number? Do you think it's five? Do you think it's 10? Do you think it's 30? 30 would be too many, by the way. And trying to navigate that, it's so interesting. And I've changed my approach to um, readings very recently, inspired by Tony Stockwell and all that wonderful learning I had at AFC, because I'm now saying to people, who do you wanna hear from? Rather than, let me see who I can get for you. I'm just being completely, who do you wanna hear from? Let me bring them in, let's work like this. And I have to say, touch wood, at the moment, 100% success rate with that. Always able to get in who they asked for. And this was solidified for me by a lady at AFC where she wanted to hear from somebody specifically. She wanted to hear from her husband and he hadn't come in and she wanted to know why he hadn't come in and she asked me to read for her. I feel like I've shared this story with you, so apologies if I have. I don't know, I just witter away in this room, but I'm gonna say it again anyway. She wanted to hear from her husband and um, she asked me if I would try and do, do that for her and I turned my mind to him and instantly he came in, instantly he was there and he said, I've been here all week. And she said, well, why haven't you come through then? And that's because he was limited by the medium's limitations. So because she was young, there were so many mediums there expecting her not to have a husband in the spirit world. It's very hard to be open to husband in the spirit world when you've got somebody who doesn't look old enough to have a husband in the spirit world sat in front of you. So it didn't mean that he wasn't there, it was just that the mediums needed opening up to it. And I'm just finding it easier, tidier, neater, just to say, who do you want to hear from and bringing them in. Now, for some people, they wouldn't like that. And I get that. But actually, if you can provide enough evidence in that moment to prove that you have got them, not that you're just making it up, then what, what's the problem? Why not work this way? So again, it's evolving, it's growing, it's shifting, it's changing. And that lady I just worked with that didn't go so well, I mean, she had so many people in the spirit world, but she wanted to hear a little bit really from, from 20 people. And that is very difficult because then in that session you've got all that blending and you're blending with one spirit and having that experience and then you're having to blend with another spirit and get that experience and blend with another spirit and get that experience but that's not her fault that's not her job to know that that's how it works it's my job to learn how to navigate that and when you have got enough and when it got to five minutes before the end and she then said i want to hear from my dad and my stepdad um I then turned and got evidence on one of them and then I had someone else popping in and I just had to do it really, really quickly and be happy with the fact that I'd only got three or four bits of evidence to prove who he was, but that was all I could give because I was running out of time and I was tired. And so it's important always to be kind to yourself and I know I say that a lot and I'm the worst at this, but it's also important to be aware, be mindful, learn. I've learned loads from that experience today. And I had readings last week and some of them I didn't think were quite where I wanted them to be, um, which is why it was so interesting when I listened to the Good Enough podcast. Um, and those readings, I ended up with messages from people saying, loved, love my reading thank you so much it meant so much to me so again you have to understand that while you're having this experience and this vulnerability and this exposure it's a very different experience for your sitter and sometimes people are monosyllabic and unresponsive because their minds are being blown not because they are saying what your inner saboteur is saying which is your mediumship shite <laughs> And so you have to find that, that sweet spot in there as well. So there we go. Another podcast, another day. I hope this has helped. Um, it's just such, such a journey. 
such a journey. And I had a friend who was an amazing evidential medium and she quit mediumship and just said, I want to live a happy and peaceful life. And I have to say, I watch her living a happy and peaceful life on Instagram and I think there's something in that. I can't deny it. There's something in it. Um, because it is such a challenge to navigate it all the time. So if you're feeling that way, that's okay. It doesn't mean the journey's not for you. I think we all need to be sharing that and exploring that. It's When you're working for spirit, there's almost this unformed idea that if it's meant to be, it will be easier or more fulfilling or happen with more of a, a sense of ease or and all that kind of stuff and actually it isn't always sometimes it's about failing or not getting it quite right or letting people get the better of you or letting your emotions get the better of you and still picking up and carrying on anyway so there we go Thank you very much for listening. And if you are one of the wonderful, wonderful folk that have left me a review, thank you so much. It helps so much. When I get my weekly email telling me the reviews, I get to read them all and it's just so heartwarming and affirming. So thank you all very, very much. And I will catch up with you again in a few days. <laughs>